Okay, I think we can start. Uh, yeah, so hello everyone. Uh, I am Alexander Vdushenko and I'm thrilled to have a talk here in Cyprus Open. And of course, greetings to our future online participants. Uh, so today we will discuss uh, the development of education and its interconnection with technology. Essentially, my talk will consist of two parts. The first one uh, will be historical and philosophical, you know, and the second is more practical and useful, I hope. Uh, so let's start with a brief history of human education uh, and um, maybe knowledge sharing development. So the first step of our journey is oral tradition. It was the only way of sharing knowledge about 3000 before Christ's era. And of course, in the earliest days of human civilization, uh, information was transferred orally from generation to generation. Storytelling, folklore, and hands-on experiences were the primary and the only methods for education. So oral speech is reliable. Let's go on. Around 5,000 years ago, in ancient Mesopotamia, the first known writing system, uh, cuneiform, was developed. Probably you have heard about it. And this was closely tied with the invention of numerical and uh, basic arithmetic, which allowed for record keeping and administration of transactions, mostly in marketplaces. First of all, there was needed convenient notation and the ability to accumulate knowledge. A uh, fun thing to know about this piece of history is that uh, the first forms of writing were uh, uh, primarily about accounting and credits long precede the, the invention of money. Uh, so clay tablets are reliable. And it is also interesting and quite well known that cuneiform numerical notation was base 60, unlike our base 10 numbers. Uh, but they had a true place value system like we do, not like Roman numerals. So the position of each number, uh, of each digit within a number, uh, determines its value. Here you see the example and the notation of uh, ancient uh, system. Okay. Now we move on to the third stage, which was connected with scrolls and libraries. So the accumulation of knowledge led to the establishment of libraries, such as the famous library of Alexandria. Scrolls made of papyrus or, or parchment were the primary means for storing and sharing information. Well, papyrus is reliable. And on this slide, you see mention of the great library of Alexandria on Latin inscription. It was one of the largest and most significant libraries uh, of the ancient world. And uh, the library was part of a larger research institution called uh, Museon. The name uh, was dedicated to the Muses, the nine goddesses of the arts. Okay, the fourth stage was the invention of printing press by Gutenberg. It revolutionized education as we see uh, today. Books became more accessible and affordable for everyone. Uh, it led to an increase in literacy rates and uh, the dissemination of knowledge. So books are truly reliable. But the more accessible information becomes, the more verification we need. This issue is as old as our history itself. Here you see the Maleus Maleficarum, also known as the Hammer of Witches. The book is, uh, this book is a stark example of the lack of scientific verification and validation methods that existed during its publication. So originated in ancient times in 1487, the book was an unscientific guide used during the period of the witch trials in Europe and all over the world. 
uh, this book established the justice framework for witchcraft. So, uh, of course, this book was accepted largely based on social beliefs and uh, rather than empirical evidence. Today, it's even more important for us not to fall prey to unfounded assertions. And of course, uh, we don't want to fill our decisions with hammer of, of witches. With the advent of electricity, technologies like the telegraph and telephone emerged, allowing for real-time communication over long distances. This made the sharing of information quicker and more efficient. The internet boom of the time was telegraph. Uh, it came into commercial use by 1840. Submarine cable, cables were laid by 1850. And this allowed rapid communication between continents uh, for the first time ever. To give you some sense of what, uh, what that meant, it used uh, to take actually two and a half months for a piece of mail to get from London to Sydney. IT of that time was the information of telegraphy. So the knowledge exchange rate continued to accelerate. So the telegraph is reliable. And let's go on to the digital age and the internet. Now we are close to modern time. So the second half of the 20th century saw the rise of computers and the internet. Information became dig digitized. Uh, it led to the creation of search engines like Google, Yandex or Baidu, and etc. This made accessing knowledge virtually instantaneous. So you know the internet is reliable. And in the current era, AI technologies like ChatGPT emerged. It provides us personalized and interactive learning. Uh, these technologies engage users in conversations. They, uh, they are trying to help any our questions. And um, of course, uh, all this takes the interaction with information on, on, on a new level. Here I want to emphasize that your native language uh, almost is not important for our system anymore. Uh, because it simply understands and translates your language to the internal representation. But is ChatGPT reliable? We will discuss it later today. The fact is that nowadays any information is extremely accessible. Even without AI assistant, uh, one has access to a massive amount of information. For example, on YouTube, you can find an explanation for almost anything. You can solve almost any problem from repairing not working washing machine to executing the proper professional technique for a squat exercise, as we see here on the slide. Uh, moreover, often you can not only watch the video, but interact with the information. Uh, you can change some features and learn by exploration. Uh, with modern tools, you can even create similar materials yourself. Uh, for instance, uh, it's not here, but using Universe Sandbox application, you can literally make planet Mars collide with uh, planet Venus and see the result. Uh, this uh, application simulates modern scientific theories about uh, the world and displays all the physics of the process on your screen within a few minutes or even seconds. Moreover, I'm sure that there is already or definitely soon will be similar application for any scientific area as medicine or mathematics and so on. Okay, yeah, let's go on. Um, the, and the next huge thing that uh, is modern AI assistant not only search for facts and information, but they also combine and even generate it successfully. We might even say that they generate a kind of new original content. Partially, it is even true, of course, for these slides. So we get an enormous amount of information. And the challenge is that actually we don't know whether it is true. Uh, here we encounter a fundamental problem. 
is it possible to somehow verify the answers of uh, AI assistant that might be smarter than we are? Or maybe we can at least align it with our goals and work together effectively. In fact, these questions uh, is most, uh, are most re relevant for education, uh, how we can use modern technologies uh, safely and for the benefit for us. I'll discuss it. So uh, now we move on to the, to the second part of the talk. And let's discuss the influence of ChatGPT in education. We start with the example of Czech company. Uh, it was focused on improving learning and learning outcomes for students. This company, as many others, was hit hard by the launch of ChatGPT. Uh, actually, in May 2023, the company said, so in the first part of the year, we saw no noticeable impact from ChatGPT. But students that paid check to practice exams uh, and get homework feedback turned to ChatGPT instead. And you see here, as a result, the company's share price decreased more than 40%. And uh, in August 2023, the company already said, we've pivoted the company to harness AI to better serve learners. And now they are building internal LLM so large language models, uh, in partnership with Scale AI company. But I, I've checked today and the price, the share price is the same. So it, it's, uh, it's not changed from, from the decrease. And of course, students master new technologies as well as you and I, and maybe even better, consider two typical examples from students of our educational program in Cyprus. Nadezhda, with her friends, had one exam in the format of solving practical cases. They had to prepare using only two task samples from the teacher. So they added the theory from slides uh, from all the lectures into the GPT, followed it with exam samples, two samples, and asked AI to generate similar sample samples based on the received theory. So it was super fast preparation for this kind of exam. And of course, they were glad to have open uh, uh, ChatGPT uh, in, in, in their hands. Let's look at another example from Yaroslav. Yaroslav, hi. Uh, he was given some task to write some kind of convolutional neural network. Uh, initially, when looking at such a task, it is not always clear how to approach it and where to start. In the past, Google solved this uh, happening with the existing solutions and showing how related tasks are done. Uh, but now ChatGPT just writes the first version of code. Usually approximately 20% uh, of this code remains in final version of neural uh, network. Mm, but still, uh, it uh, helps to understand what to Google next. And in the following process of execution, Yaroslav uses ChatGPT simply as bug fixer. Let's go on. So what are the pros and cons of using ChatGPT in studying? Let's begin with the, with the useful cases. Firstly, it helps answer questions for tools with poor or unreadable, unaccessible, inaccessible documentation. For example, it can tell you how to start using GNU debugger or something, some other tool. It provides nice and quick examples of uh, any kind. So for some JSONs or other objects or some values to fill in the database and so on, a lot of examples. And for us, one of the main points, it helps to overcome the fear of blank Slate. But what it doesn't handle well? Definitely, it is any task where you have a large general context, uh, general context of the whole project. Also, it is not typical problems uh, in not so popular areas. For example, if you ask ChatGPT to solve a dynamic programming problem in Haskell, it gives you funny answers which are totally wrong. And crucial for us and for education, actually, for different mathematical facts, 
a lot of uh, GPT generated proofs are incorrect. Okay, let's switch gears and dive into my personal story. And also let's try to think if AI replaced me. So I was born and raised uh, in Novosibirsk, uh, in far away and snowy Novosibirsk in a beautiful Soviet family. Mother is a doctor, father is a, an engineer, and Elsa, I have, I have uh, an older brother. Childhood in 19th was fun. Uh, garages and uh, uh, un unfinished buildings as playground, the sea and the forest uh, instilled uh, me a uh, love of sports and tourism. In school, about the fifth grade, I tried mathematics. Uh, already in the seventh grade, I won the regional math Olympiad. And uh, actually, it was almost a miracle. Uh, but away we go, a physics and mathematics school in the legendary Akadem Gorodok, maybe you know, uh, close to Obges, which is the micro district uh, there. Uh, then, then goes, uh, of course, Novosibirsk State University. Uh, it was math faculty, math department. Uh, the motto was, so you could not be a scientist, but you must be a candidate of science. So, yeah. Uh, and so I made my PhD thesis there uh, in 2014. Then uh, I, I made my PhD thesis in math modeling in the Institute of Computational Technologies. Then, uh, in graduate school, I wanted to try something else. And in parallel, the hype about machine learning grew. A Yandex company wanted to come in Novosibirsk and, uh, uh, with the development office and the Yandex data school. This chance could not be missed. Uh, I was fortunate to simultaneously become a curator of the school and student of the Yandex school in Novosibirsk branch. It was truly challenging. I even took first academic leave for, f academic leave for the first time in my life. Uh, before my graduation in the fourth semester, uh, I was working at Yandex and, uh, as, as data scientist. And, um, uh, so the graduation from Yandex Data School was very happy. It, it was, it, and, and working in Yandex was super useful for about three years of experience in industrial programming and analytics and data scientists. But I became increasingly aware that I was drawn back to teaching, to teaching and science and uh, some uh, organizing in education and so on. So then I moved to St. Petersburg and started working as a head of machine learning bachelor program in the new department of mathematics and computer science of St. Petersburg uh, State University. It was such an educational startup. So we uh, start up within the university. We had very strong team support from Yandex, JetBrains, Gazpromneft and other companies. And uh, we had many ambitious tasks we wanted to be to create something like uh, MIT in Russia, or even better. <laughs> now I am working here at JetBrains, developing a new bachelor program, computer science and artificial intelligence, with Neapolis University. Um, so how um, now goes an intriguing questions: Can or then does AI replace me? The, the researchers tested GPT 3.5. Uh, it is the previous best model from OpenAI uh, on reasoning problems found in intelligence tests and exams like the SIT exam. Notably, SIT is a standard, standard, standardized test uh, in USA uh, used for college admissions. And it is multiple choice and pencil and paper uh, problems uh, there that measures a student's reading, writing, and math skills. And surprisingly, GPT 3.5 performed uh, impressively well, solving 
about 75% of the problems in set math correctly, so solving it correctly. Uh, this outperformed the average score of human participants. Maybe you know that GPT 4V, the, the current version of GPT, uh, performed SAT even better. So it scored 700 out of 800 uh, points on the math set. So personally, I tested GPT 4V on some assignments from data from Yandex Data School and actually it solved a lot of them successfully too. So the level of GPT-4 now, uh, so based on education, is, uh, you know, something like Yandex Data School students. Anyway, I, I don't know uh, what is going to be, but still I can drive a car and I can understand people somehow and I hope it will help me pay the bills. Let's go on. Uh, let's return to the influence of AI on education. So to prepare this talk, we asked university teachers about AI assistants. On the slide, uh, you, can see, you can see the results of, of our short survey. So you see about 30% do not use such tools in their work. It, it is colored by red, red color, so. You may ask, why, why not using AI assistant? So what, what wrong with them? Let's delve to the um, understanding what, what the issue, issues are. Firstly, uh, there is a deliberate attempt to avoid copyright violation. Copyright violation. So this is an important consideration in today's digital age. Oh, let me uh, increase the scale, yeah. It's better. Secondly, we must acknowledge that AI technology has not yet reached a point of complete readability. This is crucial uh, because, of, uh, because all the reliance on AI without proper verification uh, can lead to significant issues with uh, information security or protocol development and uh, other related domains where you need 100% uh, accuracy and so on. Thirdly, uh, <laughs> when it comes to programming languages such as C++ or Rust, for example, human oversight is still required. And lastly, uh, there are specific challenges that ChatGPT faces such as difficulties in dealing with mathematical proofs, as, as we have mentioned. Okay, let me um, switch gears again and share my own workflow for teaching and lecture preparation. Uh, I usually work in PyCharm, complemented with Textify Idea plugin. This combination brings together LaTeX, Python, and JavaScript all in one place. It allows me uh, using powerful auto-completion and inspection of PyCharm and so on. Next, uh, of course, I am using AI Assistant. It is capable of assisting with translations in a broader sense. AI Helper is not just restricted to uh, translating languages. It can convert formats, elaborate short ideas into detailed descriptions and so on, even written text to oral speech. Thirdly, I am using the, I have to say, I am using the GitHub Copilot plugin. Uh, it offers practical pieces of code, uh, draft solutions, and um, generally it helps speed up the writing uh, of text, content, uh, actually for any purpose. Last but not least uh, is the Grazi Pro plugin. It checks for typos and polishes long sentences. So its purpose to ensure that my text is clean, concise, and clear before reaching my audience. Okay, here I'd like to show the concrete example from my own experience. It is producing, uh, I will uh, go, we will go through it. It is producing the problem for the international mathematical completion, com competition, sorry. First of all, 
So here I have screen with uh, three parts. Left side is the AI assistant page. Then in the middle we have working area. And on the right side is the final result. So I have chosen an appropriate problem from my ancient times of my teaching at Novosibirsk State University here. Then uh, I need to translate the problem from Russian to English and make LaTeX. You see here, with the help of AI assistant, I can do it in a few seconds. I simply copy paste the answer uh, from AI assistant to the working area. Then, of course, I check the result and look, for example, at the Grazi suggestions. I don't accept it here because it suggests something strange about uh, additional dot in the text after the word elements. But often it helps to polish uh, the text. Then I compile tech sources and uh, look at the PDF file. OK, it, um, then I need to write a solution. So I think through the solution and type it in LaTeX format. So firstly, I write x squared yeah, equals 0. Then uh, LaTeX write arrow command goes. Yeah, with, uh, with help again. Here you can see that uh, GitHub Copilot actually helps me to write the solution very quickly. It, sometimes it even makes simple cal calculations uh, inside uh, my working area. Uh, of, co of course, sometimes I disagree with the uh, uh, <laughs> proposals, but uh, often it helps. Then I write the second part of the solution here and uh, uh, I need to prove something like uh, product uh, commutativity so that if a b equals 0, then b a equals 0 and vice versa. And again, here, firstly, I disagree with the copilot suggestion, but uh, eventually, and second, uh, second time here, you see, I agree with long sentence from GitHub copilot, and it is... Um, Actually, it is amazing. So um, eventually, after uh, GitHub suggestions, of course, I again check everything and recompile source for the final version of problem, of math problem with solution. Really a fast, effective, and convenient workflow, at least for me. Uh, maybe you will consider using something similar uh, for your own practice. Let's go on to a few observations from uh, our teachers. They noted the incredible speed of learning today. Essentially, as soon as new knowledge emerges, it becomes almost immediately available to everyone. Uh, for instance, imagine that we discover something on Twitter today. By tomorrow, we've already added new skill to our repertoire. And in just a week, our students have acquired this skill too. That's why the crucial skill nowadays becomes the ability to solve unsolved problems. And also, our teachers highlighted certain essential activities for the development of critical thinking. Those activities include Crafting mathematical proofs. It's a very important uh, action in today's learning. Then all the students and teachers need to debug something. So debugging problems in code or other systems. And uh, of course, there are tasks related to system engineering, which cannot be solving with uh, AI assistant, including robotics, of course. Importantly, uh, engaging, and uh, again, last but not least, the engaging in human discussions and debates, not only uh, chatting with open, um, open AI. Each activity, in its own way, uh, sharpens our ability to evaluate information and um, to evaluate information critically and make uh, reasoned judgments. Here, 
um, in the final part of the talk, I uh, want to share the practical use cases of AI that teacher teachers are utilizing right now. Firstly, AI can sig significantly streamline the creation of lecture materials. Uh, with a simple prompt, AI can help you generate a detailed lecture outline and even convert that outline into visually engaging slides using tools like Reveal JavaScript, for example. This is a great example of how AI can facilitate uh, the preparation process for educators. Next, teachers are experimenting with AI's capabilities by checking the effectiveness of LLM in answering assignment questions. This not only tests the AI's understanding, but also helps to identify how students might use uh, such technology to aid their learning. Of course, in the realm of art and visuals, Dali Free uh, draws. Mm, Dali Free is another remarkable tool. It's capable of creating nice, high-quality illustrations, um, whether in raster or in vector formats. And these illustrations can be used uh, to enhance teaching materials and engage students. Lastly, AI is taking on the task on handling routine. Uh, responsibilities, from drawing course syllables to managing other repetitive tasks. Now AI is opening up space for teachers to focus on more personalized and creative aspects of their work. Okay, as we reach the final of the presentation, I'd like to leave you with some takeaways. The panorama of reliable information sources has evolved uh, over centuries, from the era of oral traditions to the age of, age, to, to the age of AI assistance. We have witnessed a mon monumental shift. So, yet an, uh, one constant remains, the need for critical thinking and verification. In today's uh, world, this need is not just constant, but has become more crucial than ever. Secondly, the incredible speed uh, at which information is now accessible uh, presents us with new opportunities. It allows uh, for rapid learning, immediate access to knowledge, and the ability to connect globally. However, it also demands from us a heightened sense of discernment and responsibility. We, as a company, addressing these changes uh, so for us, it means adapting and innovating. We already have JetBrains AI platform, um, and it is integrated across all the products, um, improving our workflows and maybe your workflows and decision-making process. Finally, we don't just adapt, but uh, we lead. We have the opportunity to be pioneers in integrating AI into education and development tools. By doing this, we can shape a smarter and more efficient learning environment and uh, overall development environment for everyone. So I actually invite you to join us, to come and teach with us, uh, in, 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 to join us in teaching and studying and in development, new learning and development environment. Actually, it's really fun and exciting, especially uh, now. So your thoughts, feedback, and ideas are available. You can connect me with me on Telegram or, or GitHub if you want. So let's collaborate. Let's shape the future of education and maybe development together. Uh, yeah, so thank you very much. And uh, I'm ready to answer your questions. And of course, Happy New Year and Merry Christmas. Yeah.